Hey guys, Mustache Tom here, here to review The Boys Season 4. So, I'm really glad that I waited to fully review the Season 4. That was before EFEP poorly covered one episode based on what the creator had said. I think that is extremely poor practice. I still believe that, that their criticisms, quote-unquote, were extremely poor and extremely in bad faith combining what the director said versus what was actually happening in the episode with uh, Huey's initial SA episode, which I believe is episode 6 out of 8. Uh, so I'm really glad I waited to see what would happen uh, in terms of the full thing. So now I can fully review and criticize properly uh, the whole season and really talk about it. So I think that overall the there were a, quite a lot of number of setups here for all the characters in season 4 from Huey initially dealing with what he was going to do with his dad in that episode uh, and his mom coming back into the picture, uh, whether or not Butcher was going to decide to use the virus or not to fight back against uh, Homelander and company. Uh, you know, Mama's Milk or MM deciding to stick around the fight knowing that his own you know, body could be at risk for what he's is putting his life on the line for. And I will point out that one person in my comments of the EFAP one mentioned how Frenchie's uh, arc was severely lacking. And now that I have the full image of Season 8, I would agree now that not, now that I've seen all of Season 8, I can see especially after the episode that, you know, had a lot of focus on it, uh, Frenchie sort of just gets bailed out super quickly from himself, you know, arresting himself. Uh, Butcher does, you know, gets him back virtually instantly, and he just quickly makes the virus. Like, yeah, they really rush that aspect of his character to slot him back into, uh you know, where he belongs in this season, particularly. Uh, and that, I think that is a consequence of just how many characters there were are going about these, you know, in the season. And who they were deciding to focus on. But I digress. Uh, the other criticisms I have of this show do take place after that episode uh, because a lot of people were pointing out how Huey uh, was, you know, sexually assaulted the time after the the, the big one. Uh, and this time around he was done so in by a chameleon type character and the issue I immediately had with it actually wasn't even initially that it happened to him again. It was actually more so that this character appeared out of nowhere to act more like a plot device rather than an actual setup and then payoff. Like seriously, this chameleon character seriously just comes in at the later end of the season to, you know, infiltrate Huey's information essentially and, you know, get in on him and then have Starlight somehow kidnapped in a in a scene that I seriously still don't believe they framed it as it was with her just being like captured while they are having a party I that was really really poorly put together like that was pathetically bad and again I'm sticking to what I saw in the show though unlike EFAP so there's that but Further criticisms moving from that is that the rest of the pacing from Huey's perspective is extremely rushed and that too still carries over with Frenchie as well. So those two characters definitely, you know, severely 
are compromised from that, and even more so, the final, final moments of the season where you suddenly just start to see all the antagonists, like all these other villains, essentially what I'll call them, uh, capture the boys, like the majority of them, if not most of them. Uh, I believe Starlight got away, if I remember that correctly. She, like, flies off, because she gets, she suddenly gets her powers back for whatever reason. Um, and I think everyone else gets caught? I don't remember if anyone else made it. Like, and I was, like, asking myself, like, how did they even know where the boys were? That didn't make any sense to me. Nothing about that finale, the, those final moments of, you know, the the flip, as it, as I would call it, makes any logical sense. They just sub happened to know where they were. Like seriously, I mean, unless that was like on the laptop of like here, this is what this is where we're gonna meet up, in groups of two or whatever. Unless that was specifically on the laptop, I gotta call this absolute nonsense. It's absolute, you know, it's so lazy. Um, so yeah, there's that. I do like what they were doing with Ryan, and then they suddenly flip him too. And I thought to myself, okay, they're trying to flip Ryan back, they bring him, uh, you know, he ends up in the hospital with a butcher there. And then, like, he recognizes, like, it's a trap or whatever. Or, you know, it has the potential to be a trap. And then he suddenly flips again. It's like, what? Really? You had him, like, not, what, two episodes ago? A episode ago? Like, singular? An episode ago saying how he didn't want this treatment to happen or befall people treating each other like this and then all of a sudden he flips back to you I'm just gonna kill this woman because he's trying to entrap me it's like come on like stick to your guns pick one don't you know if you're gonna flip a character flip them correctly don't like almost semi commit like it's a pretend 180 what what, what is this why are you why is the show writing in this way so late in the game? It's so, it's so poor. It's so piss poor. Again, I think there are better setups. You know, if again, if you're gonna flip a character back, and this flip to me just nothing about it, you know, feels correct. I mean. You had the thing earlier with Ryan, the son of Homelander, uh, where he, you know, he's a part of this fake rescue, and then, like, he, you know, he's told to shove the guy, and he super shoves him, and, you know, he died. the guy dies, and everyone thinks that, that that guy's a villain, and you see that Ryan at least appears initially to feel some guilt, but then Homelander, you know, does his thing, his talk. Uh, to sort of sway him away from that. But then you have Butcher, you know, swaying him right back. And then, again, nothing happens between those things. Ryan comes to his own conclusion from Butcher's perspective uh, from the last episode. And then he just flips. And it makes no sense. It's absolutely backwards. It's like, why? Why did you flip the character again? It, it, you didn't give him an arc. You character assassinated him. Like, seriously, this is terrible. And I, I wish, I so wish that EFAP just waited for the last two episodes to come out. Because it's like, now there's actually stuff to criticize that didn't come from the creator. You could just look at what's in the episodes and actually just see what they did at the finale. And it's like, you could have just waited. You seriously could have just waited. But nope, you had to do the dumb shit and, and in bad faith. That episode was, that that coverage of, of the boys was so terrible. Again, you can see the previous video. I know, super close up cam. I do apologize. As you can see, I'm trying to atone for that now. Uh, nonetheless, it's like, 
there's plenty to criticize here. So much so that I would honestly have to give this close to an either 5 or a 6 out of 10. Like, there really, especially for that latter half of the last two episodes, so much breaks so quickly. It's like, how much... Like, you needed, like... I want to say that the boys needed, like, five more episodes. Seriously. They needed more episodes if they wanted to cover everything that they were trying to do in a substantial way. Because as is, this is absolutely disgusting. And the thing is, is that the reason I wouldn't go below that is because there are a lot of great setups. So many great setups. And there are fantastic early moments in the season, as I was discussing. So, it, like, again, with so many great set setups, you need the same amount of time to do the payoffs. And that's exactly where this season fails, is the lack of payoffs or the, or the abrupt flips that they decide to do. Uh, and for the case for Butcher is that he goes full power mode. Uh, he stops giving a fuck. He gives in after what Ryan, after Ryan's flip. So Ryan's flip makes Butcher flip. Um, so again, it's like there is more of a connection between why that one makes sense to a degree, but Ryan's, you know, payoff isn't anything. It just comes out of nowhere. So yeah, again. I really wished that they had waited. Because uh, now you can argue in good faith what is actually just in the episodes. Because again, there is still quite a nifty number of set uh, yeah, setups that the boys accomplishes in season 4. But a lot of the payoffs, and especially eight, so episodes 8, 7, and 8, are really, really bad. Now, I also argue, the reason I won't go lower, is because I think the politics, and I know a lot of people say, oh, the politics are so, they're, so, they're too close. And I'm like, guys, I said it in my last video. I said it, I know, I do apologize for the close camera. I said, look, these are the, you know, going back to you know, kind of mocking EFAP's coverage. It's like, you simultaneously said that in your coverage, and then earlier, I know they have done this, they celebrated South Park. And it's like, their satire is so direct too now. What do you mean? You can't tell me that one direct satire of South Park is good and then completely flip and tell me, a direct, you know, satire is bad in The Boys. It doesn't make any sense. In fact, I think the satire is some of the best satire because it's direct. Again, I had so many comments, but I had none of them explain why the satire was bad. None of them could do it. It just never happened. And... You know, it's, I think it's absolutely crucial to be very blunt when you're talking about satire. And again, that isn't to say that there can't be subtle satire, but again, I had zero examples of that in my own comments when I covered EFAP's coverage. So, I still don't know what that even would look like, by the way. But I'm also not saying it's impossible, but... At least from what I've seen from my own satire, you know, consumption, is that it is about being very direct. It is about punching back at, you know, both political sides, the left and the right. And it's very crystal clear which side is which in this show. The lines that are very, very, they hit their direct one-to-one. -one. It's that crazy that they did it and you know I think that takes a, 
a set of balls. It takes a set of courage to be like, we're just going to be that direct. We're just going to make Homelander literally say, you know, have the saying that Trump says, except he's going to add the whole make superhero, soups great again, I believe is one of his last lines in his little speech. Um, so yeah, it really is fantastic how so direct it is against, you know, what it's saying. And again, like, they, they do mock the left, you know, the whole woke thing, too. You know, they have the whole um, ice skating parody thing, where they have this entire song about, like, uh, I think it was something about Jesus and Christmas, I think the song's about exactly. Um, that scene is pretty wild, too, by the way, uh, the after effect of it. Because uh, everyone's like freaking out when like home like because it's like an invasion and Homelander's like trying to kill Huey because he's in the the, the the vents, and then you know he's like shooting this stuff and then people start freaking out and everyone in there dies. It's like so over the top, but it does like kind of mock like the super left, you know, the whole woke thing. Which, you know, I would make the argument right back. It's like, well, I mean, every time I've heard conservatives use that word, it's just, to me, it still sounds like a replacement word for diversity. And, yeah, the boys really reflects right back to it. It's like, they mention the whole trans your kids thing, and it's like, considered, conservatives literally do that. I have seen the videos. I know the politics. I've seen plenty of it on both sides. So it's like, yeah, I know. That's exactly what they say. So again, to hit it so one-to-one, -one, beautiful. Absolutely crush it. Absolutely keep doing it for season five, I believe is also their last season, which has already been confirmed. Um, and again, I do think that this se this particular season needed more episodes in it to cover, you know, some of its elements. Uh, to make the flip, for example, again, better set up so that the payoff could be like, ah, I see why he would flip back. Or, you know, for Huey, I would actually change what they do with Huey after his first sexual assault thing. Like, I think I would honestly keep it because of how dark they keep that scene. Again, it's not a comedy scene. EFAP claimed that it was because the writer said so. So fuck them for doing that in particular. Uh, but I would argue to change the later scenes to have their files be deleted another way. If that's the route. The route that you were trying to go down, you know, find another way. Maybe you could have, just have a, a superhero that can temporarily go invisible. I don't know, like, why not? Or you can have another speedster character, because I know A-Train isn't the only one uh, to, you know, essentially uh, go in and do the, the removal. I just feel like doing this chameleon thing, again, and more so than even what I just said, that late, nothing about that feels right. Nothing about it does. Um, from the character introduction, because it's a plot device. That's what it really is, because it's there's no character there as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I'm going to stick with a 5 out of 10 for this season. I would dare push it to a 6, just because I think the satire is that solid. But I wouldn't go higher than a 6 out of 10. And that's my official review for the boys. And if you ended up enjoying it, then please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Also make sure to check out those links in the description. One will head you over to my petition to help out smaller YouTubers. Second to my PayPal, where you can help support me and my channel directly. And third to my Discord server, where you can join, collab, and chill for free. And until next time, everyone, bye bye